Lisa May Reader, Crow Song, and today I'd like to read to you from Black Coffee by Mystery Savior. Now, on to Act 1, Chapter 18. Everyone, I'd like you to meet my boyfriend. The room was dead silent. No one moved as they stared at the nervous couple. Kazakhstan was the first to move towards the pair with a welcoming, albeit concerned, smile. He held out a hand to the man standing beside his brother and fluffed out his wings. Nice to meet you. My name's Kazakhstan, he introduced, shaking the tall North American's hand. It's nice to meet you, too. I'm Canada. The man smiled kindly, his other arm interlocked with Ukraine's. Jeez, you guys look so scared. Belarus snickered at Russia, Germany, Nazi, and USSR. She, too, stood up and shook Canada's hand with a grin. Bell, that's not fair. Russia pouted, slowly getting up as well. You knew this was going to happen. Well, yeah, of course I did. Belarus quipped, picking up a curious Sylvie and setting him on her hip so that he could get a closer look at Canada. But unlike you weirdos, I didn't freak out. I am not the one who is freaking out. Germany clamored, lifting a cup up to his lips with a shaking hand, spilling some water from the movement. Belarus gave him a cynical look as Sylvie giggled at Germany's weird freakout. Ukraine folded his arms and narrowed his eyes at his younger sister. You knew the whole time? Duh! <laughs> That's how it works, numbnuts! Swore! Sylvie yelled, causing Ukraine to flinch and startling Canada half to death. Belarus, however, didn't look surprised at all and just quirked an eyebrow at the young boy. How is that a swear? It just is. I heard you call Kaz a dumbass like an hour ago, Russia recalled walking up to the gathering crowd of countries. Swore! Sylvie repeated, adding a few seconds later. And that was past Sylvie. Yeah, well, past Sylvie is an asshole. Sylvie lightly smacked his older brother, pursing his lips angrily. Swore! Oh, shush, Ukraine groaned, leading Canada away from his crazy siblings and towards his possibly crazier parents. Canada gulped as USSR stood, towering over the two of them. He shook Canada's hand and gave him a curt nod. Nazi rolled his eyes and leaned over his husband and whispered loudly to Canada, Ignore him, he's grumpy. I'm not grumpy. Soviet grumbled. Third Reich slided around a uh, Soviet and embraced Canada softly, to which he promptly hugged back. He stood back to look him up and down, nodding satisfied. You picked a good one, Rain, Nazi approved, winking at his son-in-law. Make sure you don't lose this one. Ukraine blushed and grumbled, tugging on Canada's arm. His boyfriend chuckled and gave him a comforting side hug, to which Ukraine melted into happily. Soviet and Nazi shared a look and smiled at each other. Russia watched his brother and his brother's boyfriend being cute and coupley, and narrowed his eyes. He had heard about Canada from America, 
and had met him at the party, but he still didn't trust his siblings in the hands of anyone, no matter how much of a saint they may be. Soon, everyone was seated at the table, and they had tucked into their food. Belarus trying to convince Sylvie to eat his broccoli. Just one, at least? No, you can't make me. That's illegal. Consent. Sylvie, that's not... C-O-N-C-E-N-T. Consent! You're never gonna graduate, Ditya. That roughly translates to child or kid. Needless to say, she wasn't very successful. So, Canada, Nazi began, turning to Ukraine's boyfriend, who had just started to dig into his mashed potatoes. How did you meet Rain? Canada glanced at Ukraine with a small smile before turning his gaze back to his boyfriend's parents. Well, I was kinda drunk. More like completely wasted, Ukraine snickered, slicing up his sausages. Canada blushed in embarrassment, nervously nodding along. Yeah, pretty wasted. And my brother, America, convinced me to try doing karaoke. Sounds like him, Russia snorted and nudged his father in the side, causing USSR to snicker. Nazi rolled his eyes and sighed, casting an unimpressed glare at the two of them for interrupting. Kaz tilted his head at his younger brother and looked at him quizzically. I'm confused. You know his brother? Oh yeah, they're very buddy-buddy, Soviet smirked, wiggling his eyebrows at his son, who started hiding his face in Huzushanka flaps. I found them curled up together in the meat locker. Okay, no, Papa, you're taking that out of context. Russia groaned, burying his face into the fluff. So anyway, Nazi quickly returned the conversation back to Canada, cutting off Soviet, who had opened his mouth to tease his son some more. You tried karaoke? Oh, yeah, right. Well, I went up there with my brother, and we chose this one song called Marry You. He sang the first verse solo, we both sang the chorus, and I sang the second verse solo. He was so amazing, Ukraine gushed, intertwining his hand with Canada's with a sweet smile. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Canada's cheeks tinted pink, and he scratched the back of his neck with a humble smile. I'm really not that fantastic. My brother's way better. No way! Ukraine protested, pouting. Russia shook his head, having emerged from his little hiding spot indignantly. No way! Mary's awesome! This is why we think you're gay, Russ. Belarus sighed, leaning back in her chair, having given up on Sylvie's well-being. Russia groaned. Bisexual, Bell. Bisexual. And is it illegal to just want to compliment people without liking them now? I have never, and I mean never, seen you like a girl. Like, once. Nazi and Canada were having their own conversation at this point, right having abandoned involving the entire family since that was just chaos. After all, Kazakhstan and Sovi were having a conversation on the best Mario game, 
Ukraine was defending Canada's honor for really himself and anyone would who would listen, which was poor Germany, who was trying to humor him. And Belarus and her father tag-teaming Russia with gay jokes. But they were both gay, and so it canceled out. So, how did you two properly meet? Canada spooned some food into his mouth before swallowing and answering. Well, I was looking in the crowd and being my very drunk self, when I noticed Ukraine and started singing the song just for him. Nazi chuckled kindly. You serenaded him. Yeah, kinda, Canada confirmed, looking down in embarrassment at his fingers. That's adorable, Nazi raved holding his hand to his chest and looking wistfully at his husband. My union did that for me once outside my window to convince my old man that he was a good guy. He wrote the song, too. I'm guessing it worked? Canada giggled. Nazi held his cheek in his hand and ogled his husband, who was still terrorizing his son cheerfully with his daughter. Let's say I can't imagine a better life than this. And that's the end of this chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. Anyway, that being said, I hope you have a nice rest of your day, night, or whatever it is for you. Also join the Discord, please. And I will see you tomorrow.